So how do we operate safely in cloud native without causing harm to ourselves, without introducing these problems that we looked at earlier, without actually costing ourselves more than we're actually gaining in value in the long run? Uh, so I've been training to uh, be, get my AMGA1 mountaineering certification. And the very first thing that we learn about in how to travel safely in the mountains is how to mitigate hazards. Let's talk about the hazards in Kubernetes. Uh, number one, investing too much time in adoption. So this can happen in a lot of ways, but at some point, if you spend more time than you gain in value, Kubernetes might be scary for you and your team. Uh, so spending more time than creating value than it's worth. Um, furthermore, we need to be aware of this thing called technical bankruptcy, which is this magical point in investing into tech where it no longer makes sense for you to undo it and you've already gone over the edge and at that point you've already taken the loss and you've just considered to move forward. So being aware that there is a point and that you and your team could hit that point. Uh, furthermore, you can easily sidestep this by using vendor lock-in, by taking a uh, your credit card and putting it on a web page and paying someone, but then you're introducing this new dependency, which is you're having to deal with someone anytime you need something fixed in your system. So that's equally as hazardous and worrisome. Uh, furthermore, it's easy to continually hit this hazard. If you're hitting this hazard slowly, it's sort of a death by a thousand needles. Uh, if, if you're slowly going over on your cost budget every time you try to introduce a new piece of cloud native technology, ultimately that's gonna add up and you're gonna be in the red. So being aware that this is a problem you can mitigate. Lock-in. There's three types of lock-in you need to be aware of in Kubernetes. Number one, technical lock-in. Uh, for the software engineer-minded folks and the operators here in the, in the room today, uh, this can come in a lot of forms, particularly in the tooling we use to operate and manage Kubernetes clusters, as well as the tooling we use to install uh, our applications and our configurations on our Kubernetes clusters. A great example of this is CNI. You need CNI to get a Kubernetes cluster running. Most people don't know what it is out of the bat. And then all of a sudden downstream when you're ready to upgrade your cluster, you realize you actually do care very deeply about this tool you didn't even know you were married to. Uh, cluster management is another form of lock-in. Once you get a cluster up and running, it's pretty hard to change that. There's tooling in place to make it easier and this, the ecosystem's moving that way, but it still is a problem today. Vendor lock-in, this is terrifying. This basically says I have a commercial agreement with someone that anytime there's a problem, I need to call them and otherwise I can't fix this problem uh, or I try to fix it on my own. Uh, to me, this seems like a hazard that I would not want to be in uh, and the whole point of open source software is to liberate you from the scenario. The whole point of Kubernetes is to liberate you from the scenario. So being aware that that is a hazard you and your team could get into um, is helpful. Version lock-in. We see this in Kubernetes when people modify or mutate their clusters. Uh, let's take a vanilla Kubernetes cluster of version N, and let's uh, make a change to it that is irreversible. Now when I need to install a version of Kubernetes N plus one, I can't do that without some complicated upgrade story, so I'm stuck using the versions or the features that were only in the version that I mutated. Being aware that this is a problem in Kubernetes is important. 